Welcome to the French Dream Man channel. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood. We have a good one. No slope. Flat. Now, as you can see, there's some big trees in this backyard. And over time, they've raised the ground. There's actually negative pitch across the back. They get water in this screened-in porch area, and they got a shop vac right there, and they're always sucking up the water that comes in. Not to mention, there was so much water that came in the garage, it moved boxes. That's a lot of water. When you're starting to move and push things around to the other side of the garage, and then it bottlenecks right here. All right, so we're going to show you guys how to drain a flat yard with no slope. I know that we get a lot of comments regarding this. This is a really hard thing to teach. We're going to show you exactly what we do because we do it time and time again. It's, it's something that we do so often that I probably only show one video in 50 installs. So, you know, there's just only so much time to make YouTube videos. While I'm running the business, luckily, the crew's putting together some video for us. This is fantastic. French Drain Man has been growing. It's getting bigger and bigger all the time. It's taking so much of my time to run it that we had to come up with a plan. So the guy said, hey, give us the equipment. We'll get you some video. So we definitely got to give a big thanks to the crew because they have this job you know, before them. I mean, they have to dig this trench across the back of the house, and there's so many trees. The tree roots were so dense and thick. It's asking a lot to have somebody stop and just periodically shoot some video. So this is what we're going to do from now on so we can get more jobs, you know, for you to view and see and learn, and hopefully you get to see something that resembles your situation, just makes it super easy for you to have the confidence to do it. So we couldn't get any ditch witch mini skid loaders in this backyard. Everything was just so tight. The trees are so close to the house. So yes, believe it or not, our little mini excavator is narrower than a ditch witch. The tracks on this little mini excavator, there is a setting where you can actually expand them so you have a wider stance and it's more secure. But right now, they're very narrow, so we were able to get in here and work. You can see Francisco is working the ground. He's just trying to break up the roots. Right now, that's what he's trying to do. He's just trying to break these roots up He's going to be pulling up just massive, massive, just knotted up, big, big buckets full of roots. After this job, when the guys came in, it was just unbelievable. There was more roots than dirt dug out of this job. Now, these are giant cedar trees. You can see just how big they are. So this wasn't going to hurt the trees at all. It wasn't going to be a liability in that way. So always use the rental equipment if you're a DIY and always use your equipment as a contractor to your advantage. You can do a lot with the equipment. You know, Francisco, he's just shearing off roots right now, making it possible to dig out a, a big drain. So what we want to do is we want to loosen this all up, break up all the roots and then we're just going to start wheelbarrowing it outside of the yard. And then we have a ditch switch on the outside of the yard. We're going to dump these wheelbarrows in the bucket and then take it to our big gooseneck dump trailer. And that's how we're going about this. It ended up being pretty efficient for a job that wasn't full on machine accessible. It turned out okay. It could have been worse, that's for sure, because we weren't even... We weren't even sure that we can get the mini excavator back there. So we were definitely, definitely happy to be at, at this point 
where we have a mini excavator in the backyard busting up the roots pulling on the roots now look at the giant bucket full of roots that's how dense the the root is so when you have this happen this raised the elevation of this yard making the drainage even worse it was never a good situation but once the trees get big and these roots expand in the dirt it raises the elevation so any tree you have in your backyard is going to tr it's going to change your drainage it's going to change the way your yard originally drained that just comes with having trees and i don't recommend cutting trees down i just recommend when you plant them instead of going oh this is perfect let's measure it oh 30 feet off the house that's good and then right here it's going to give us shade on the deck one day okay so let's look past all that and make sure we're not in a drain easement we see it all the time it's funny because the guys will do well french drain man as a company we're, we're now doing you know three yards a day so you know that's that's doing something in the zip codes that we service. You would think that at some point you'd be caught up or things would kind of slow up. But it's never going to happen because people create their own drainage problems most of the time. So that's why I'm taking the time to explain this to you guys. Make sure that as you do your landscape, as you enjoy that new home that you're probably watching this video because maybe you have a little standing water maybe you stumbled on our channel because you want to bury your you know roof runoff system but as you place things in your yard look at how your yard drains understand where the swales are understand that if you plant something there and you might think oh this is okay but what's it going to be like five years from now when all these roots grew all these roots expanded and they lifted the ground you know several inches and as time goes on it trees can lift and and lift the ground a couple feet around them as these trees get you know very large and their roots continue to, you know to get larger in diameter so as we continue to pull out more wood you know these are just these roots are not an issue. Like I said, there's no liability to the cedar trees. And I'm not going to worry about them blowing over because they're not going to blow on the house. If we weakened them, they'd fall the other way. But that's not even going to happen because these trees are too rooted in. They're too mature. But these are all the things you got to think about as a contractor. If it's a young tree, if it's a small tree, and you share too many of their anchoring roots off on one side, and the wind happens to come out of that direction, yeah, you, you might get a call one day that, hey, you put a drain in my yard, and my tree just blew over during a, 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 you know, the high winds that came through during that thunderstorm. And yeah, I speak from experience. You know, most of what I share with you guys, I speak from experience. So hopefully the young contractors learn from this and the DIYers that are going to do this themselves. But that would fill up with water right there, that screen patio. It's got shop vacs in there that just keep sucking up the, uh, the water as it comes in. That's no way to live. You can't enjoy your home like that. And then the garage, water just ended up pouring in the garage to the point to where it moved everything from the back wall to the front of the garage. So that's, that's saying something when you're floating when you're floating everything and the pictures that we were shown it was amazing how much water was running through this garage so there's a church behind this house now always think about the neighboring properties i can't tell you how many times i had to change the size pipe i had to change how many pipes we were putting in i mean things change when you start taking on the water from neighboring properties you have to pay attention to that if you're just building a system to take care of the water on that property because you measured it and you calculated how much you know how many gallons you know per you know two inch rainfall things like that you're gonna find yourself in a bad way you're gonna think okay i can just do this with one four inch pipe but 
you know, sometimes it needs to be a quad pack. Sometimes it needs to be parallel French drains, you know, where you just have a French drain and then another one just seven feet apart. You know, we do that so often. We do that so often. So in this case, we're just going to run one massive open French drain behind this house. We're going to put in a big six inch pipe. Um, you know, that's that was the way to do this. I do worry down the road about root intrusion. Of course, we're going to build this so that it's dry as a bone. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to share that with you. I'm going to let you know how we go oh, yeah, about building these like so they stay dry, completely dry. So again, Fine. you know, we're dealing with a situation where everything's flat behind this house. We're going to create our own slope, but we're digging deeper and deeper. So how the heck are we going to get this water out of here? You know, we'll show you guys all that. But in the event that there is root intrusion down the road, I did want a big giant six inch pipe in the ground. Super easy to get inside that pipe. You know, take care of business if need be. You know, certain things that we can do. I don't expect it. Again, the way we build our systems to where we don't leave any water behind. If there's no water for the tree roots to sniff out, they're usually going elsewhere. They're not going to fill the French drain. We also put so much stone in our drain, that's going to create a nice gap from the dirt to our pipe. Now, that tree root can't survive. It's not going to grow in big air voids. If it's pea gravel and something small, something small for stone, and it has next to no void, very little void, that's going to stay damp, and now a tree root can survive. It can continue to grow and expand and enlarge. That's going to be a problem. We're going to use one and a half inch round rock. There's going to be such a big void between the stones. It's going to create so much air. It's going to be a situation where a small, you know, thread-like root that tries to find its way into our system, it's just going to burn right off. That's what happens on a hot summer day when you have a bunch of void and an open French drain. Any little threads during the rainy season, you know, that formed and as this tree's trying to, you know, basically spread more root, that's just going to become dust in the wind. You just air prune them off. We studied air pruning years ago. If you don't know this already, French Drain Man is owned by Sherwood Landscape Construction. It's a, des it's a design build landscape company that literally just did high end jobs for decades. When French drain man grew and there was just so much of a calling you know we basically just went into it full time but that's the story that's the backstory of this company so when you have a licensed building company that did design build for decades and everything that they designed had drainage built into it the engineers made sure of it you worked with engineers they told you how they wanted things to drain. A lot of times you didn't have the choice to dictate that. But all those years of working with all those different engineers, you know, it just creates a very diverse background. So we take everything that we've learned, the air pruning, the big air voids, the open French drains, we've, we've taken it all and carried it, you know, right in the French drain man, share it with you guys. All right, so we're getting pretty deep as you can tell, it's getting really, really tight in here. I got to give Francisco just a huge shout out because he's smooth as silk. He's got nerves of steel as he works in this crazy confined area. I mean, look at his guys can't even stand on the side of the machine. You can see... Valente, he's spotting in the trench. You can see a man up top, but he's in front of the machine. You never see this, but we have nowhere else to stand, nowhere else to go. So we were lucky to get the machine in here. 
I mean, this whole job was so tight. Imagine this. We couldn't get a Ditch Witch mini skid loader in here. We couldn't get an SK-1050, which normally that thing will fit anywhere. Look at that. From house to fence, it's mini excavator. So, great job, Francisco. I mean, just dynamite. We got in, we got out. No damage to the fence, no damage to the house. So, super important. All right, let's check out what's going on. So, the guys got through that dig, and they have the fabric in the trench. That's a 6-inch pipe right there. That's a big 6-inch perforated pipe. That's going to move a lot of water. That's going to move a crazy amount of water. Look at how big this open French drain is. That is just sick. Now you can see we came off the downspouts and we went to a pop-up with a turf restrictor plate. People always ask, how do you run these in a French drain? Look at it. This is the anatomy of that. You just lay it on top. It's no big deal. You know, don't overthink it. That's it. The water is going to come out of the pop-up. And it's just going to go into the open French drain. So that's what we did. We went to a Screaming Demon duplex system. Man, that is beautiful. And here's another downspout. Again, just take it, lay it right there on top. That is it. That is it. Look at all that chamber. I love that. The guys put so much chamber on that Screaming Demon duplex. Beautiful, beautiful. So here they went ahead and they burrito wrapped it. I get this question all the time. All right, so what, how do you do your open French drain? Do you burrito wrap it still? Yes, yes, we do. So we just went ahead, burrito wrap that up. Once we get the stone all in here and we burrito wrap this, you know, we pin the fabric. That's what we're talking about. We fold one side over, then we fold the other side over. We trim it. Always trim your fabric. Don't have heavy overlap. Our fabric, if you're using our fabric... We have it punched. We have it ran through twice. We have the manufacturer punch it, and then we punch it again. You know, we go to great lengths to up the flow rating on this non-woven geotextile filter fabric. Make sure you don't have heavy overlap. When you take one side of the trench and the other side, you have to cut the fabric to fit perfect. You just want maybe a couple inches of overlap and go ahead and use the, the fabric staples, the fabric pins, you know, the, just hold it tight and stitch it. But don't get lazy on this part. Don't get lazy on this part because if you have heavy overlap, those little holes that up the flow rating, when you have heavy overlap, they don't line up. So you're back to basically a piece of fabric that has no holes punched, and now you're not going to have that increased flow rating. In a case like this, we need maximum flow rating. We got water coming out of that church area. We have all this water, sheet water coming off the church parking lot. It ends up in a green belt. The green belt area can't, you know, percolate all the water during flood conditions. It's just so much water that ends up in the back of this this yard and up against the back of this house. That's what's been causing them problems. So you can see how we went ahead and we put the um, inch and three quarter round rock right on the filter fabric after we cut it, pinned it. You know, we, we call that a burrito wrap. All right, so here's another lesson for you. When you're working in an area that's not machine accessible, don't just keep the machine up on the trailer chained down. Or, or leave it and not bring it with you. You can still use it for loading and unloading and cleanup you know, aspects. The machine is still gonna save you time. So you can see that we have this giant system. We have it all wrapped. Now like that corner that's you know, a big triangle, if you will, they cut additional per, uh, piece of fabric and laid it on top. That's how they covered that. Beautiful, look at that. No contaminants. This system's never going to get any dirt in it. It's going to stay clean. You know, that was the point. You know, mud's not going to fill the voids of this system. You know, not the way we build it. You know, and we're putting down a generous amount of stone, too. And it's all that inch and a half round rock with big void. We want the water to come to this backyard, hit this stone, just get absorbed, get it right to the pipe. And then we want to get it to that screaming demon 
duplex system. So this is pretty cool. Pay attention to the discharge. Look at the discharge right here. We're coming out right there. You're going to hardly see this when it's done. So we got three inch schedule 40. We're using this because it's going to stay flat for us. Now PVC is going to get all busted up here in the north during the freeze and thaw. So we're going to put our inch and a half our nice pliable inch and a half flex that we have schedule 40 inch and a half discharge that we have for our systems we're going to slide it right through that sleeve we call that three inch schedule 40 pipe a sleeve or a raceway you can see the guys are working together they're going to slip that thing right through i don't have to worry about somebody landscaping with a shovel you know digging weeds out or a small tree out or something like that it, they can hit the schedule 40 and it's not going to hurt it. So we're using the Schedule 40 for its mighty, mighty crush rating to protect our flex line. Our flex line is never going to crack. It's never going to get any leaks. It can move up and down in the freezing and thaw here in the north. That's not going to be an issue. So that's what we're doing. We're taking advantage of both the strengths, a soft pipe versus a hard pipe. You know, I don't like running hard pipe in the frost, you know, if it's code and they're making me for a sump pump discharge line, I got some tricks so I can run it in the frost and I can, it's an expensive, expensive bag of tricks to make it work, but I prefer to only use PVC if I'm below the frost. If I'm 42 inches or deeper, then I'm fine with PVC. Then it's not going to get, you know, get cracked and, mm -hmm. you know, it, it could still fall victim of settling. Man, look how clean that is. You can hardly see where that discharge line sticking out of that curb. Man, that is beautiful. Look at that. Just look closely on the left side right there. You barely could see that discharge line. Beautiful work by the men. Beautiful work. I mean, just I can't say enough about this crew and the work they turn, the quality of work. Just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Look at this open French drain. Textbook. You got your downspouts with a turf restrictor plate and a pop-up just laying on top. I mean, it don't get any better than this. It just don't. Beautiful work, man. All right, until the next video. French Drain Man is the leader in indoor and outdoor sump pump systems. Protecting your family against mold and mildew as well as flood protection. The industry leaders and innovators.